So that's brilliant. Nobody's using upright bass like that. All right, yeah, I'm still in Austin. I'm going to be traveling for like the next year. So we're going to be in a bunch of weird places. Just know that I love you and I'm glad you're here. And please make sure to appease the algorithm gods and interact with this video so it gets out to more people. I love you and appreciate you, but still. This song is insane. I love it. This ain't build a bitch. You don't get to pick and choose. Different ass and bigger boobs. If my eyes are brown or blue, this ain't build a bitch. All right, let's talk about that first half. We had a lot of cool things starting us off here. Uh, first thing is, let's start with the guitar. This ain't build a bitch. You don't get to pick and choose. Different ass. It's just doing a very basic one and two, one and two. One and two, arpeggiation of the chords to lay this kind of foundation that complements the the bells really well. I can't quite tell, but it sounds like there's a couple of guitars also just hitting the chords. I could be wrong, I can't quite tell, but there's definitely at least three guitar layers going on there based on what I'm hearing from the finger slides. Now, let's talk about that pluck because it's really interesting and this is something I love when people interplay melody and counter melody within two instruments, which is super jargony, but I'll explain what I mean. Now, listen to that line. That line is melodic, it's following the melody. Okay. Now it breaks away right there. It goes on the third line. And then it just deviates off. And I love when two parts have this connectedness and then they kind of diverge and interwovenly come together. It's a really clever trick to use when composing or really arranging these core parts together. So just love stuff like that and it caught my ear immediately. It gives your ear this weird dance because you're expecting to fall along and then it doesn't, it's really cool. Now, of course we're starting with the hook. We have this wonderful, I can't tell if it's the layering or other people who recorded vocals, but it sounds like this, this part is a different stack of people maybe a couple of different people or one person than this. If this somehow gets to Bella or her team, can you please confirm or deny, is this the same group of people that did that stack and this stack? Really curious because I hear so much more mid range here than this. It sounds very different and I don't know, I love that. Like that's something I appreciated from Ariana Grande's work is like hearing Victoria Monet and other singers coming in on the backgrounds. So just curious to always know that stuff. Now I love the way that that blue, Now pay attention to this interesting vocal stack interplay move because the whole chorus, it's, and then they always come in after a few words, like on the downbeat. Downbeat. And then everybody does the whole line together on the, the kind of payoff line. Whole harmonies there, all words which is something we didn't get before. And then the last vocal thing I want to cover is that now instead of a one vocal, there might be tiny doubles tucked under there, but then I can hear the doubles are brought up or brought in. You can hear it a lot more. And they're kind of loosely tuned here, which is an interesting choice. And of course we have them, let's see a clap. And then we have these really interesting carnival-esque carnival pop. Is that a thing? It's like what Melanie Martinez popularized. Now, all of these little transitions are some of my favorite production moments in this track. You know, we have this like kind of cute, quirky little studio banter. 
And then along with the harmony, which actually reminds me of a song that I, I didn't even think about this when I was producing it, but we did something similar using that combined with some transition sounds to like drive us into the first. Oh. Oops. Well, I mean, they're totally different contexts. So. Oops. Well, y'all know about that song soon. All right, so check this. We have so many cool things. Let's talk about the beat first. We have these interesting, we obviously have the big kick drum, the really tight snap, but there's these interesting little percussion bits that it's the right here. I can't quite tell there. It's probably something fully based that's been mangled and made to kind of hit hard and be really tight, but it sounds great and it fills the space. So it's not just do, which would be boring. So I love those details. Makes your group feel awesome. And there's a couple of variations. And then, so we have this ending here. Do, 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 do. And we also have. So we have two kick drums there instead of the one. So we have this nice two bar phrase on the drums going on. And then we have these little hits right here. Boom. Awesome stuff. And then let's take a look at what's up here. Interestingly enough, there's no other harmonic content here besides her voice. It's B808 and her vocal. And then we get that here. Right? So very little information going on around the vocal there, which is interesting. But the vocal treatment is by far what makes it unique. And let me see if I can format this into a TikTok clip. <laughs> Bella's vocal is treated in a really unusual way, but I really like how it sounds. So I want to break down what's going on here. So first off, there's this very like mid heavy reverb. It's almost cloudy in the way that it comes across. But of course her vocal is so crispy and clear and tight and precise that it ends up working out and just feeling like a little round and warm. Uh, I don't often hear reverbs like this on a voice, but then on top of that, we have these whisper tracks, which is a very common move in pop music to not just sing it, but to also Can you hear it? Check this out. Wild, absolutely wild. And this stuff just helps the vocal sound more intimate, sound more in your face, and sound more kind of percussive and tight with these whisper tracks. But besides that, that's really it. And then that same swell, maybe also have a little bit of a shh coming in. Now, we just have that dun dun. So we have one arpeggiated element. We also have this one kind of bell sound. So remember, the only things different here besides the payoff line in the verse 1B, which to me is a great thing to remember for your own verses, is one arpeggio and then a ding. That's all we needed to keep the verse moving forward, plus a swoosh to the payoff line. A little harmony. And a whistle, a ding, a f just a few things. It sounds like they're really having fun and really taking a kitchen sink approach to a song like this. And I like that because we had the, har the harp and the studio banter, and then now we have a uh, uh, kickbox ding, a whistle, 
and then the the ding is even pitched. Which is just a great testament to the attention to detail in a production like this, where every sound is not just like left to its own devices. Every tail, front end, the shape, the decay. Should I cut it off? Why? No. Yes. All this is taken into careful consideration. But he the same build, bitch. And then, and this is the first time we're getting the a bitch, I believe. Now, of course, these chords, these synths are the same as the first chorus, second half. It sounds like they've layered it up or just brought it up so it's more pronounced and full. And that bell is still in there, make no mistake. Which is very subtle. And they're now favoring in the mix the the legato stuff in the front half here. And then they bring in the, the pluck a bit more. And then this bass movement is great. It is so... Okay, not enough songs do this. Not enough songs are playing with bass movement like Build a Bitch does. So listen to the second chorus here. Because... It's such a like, oh, surf rock move or such a blues, jazz, just way out of left field for this genre. But it is so cool because I never expect the bass to carry the energy like that. I love it. So that is the only thing that really carries this energy. Yeah, everything else is the same. There might be some differences in the layering, um, like how many doubles are used when they come in, things like that. but. The harmonies sound very similar to the first one. Now, we have this transition, of course. Our second ding. Now, these are the things that I want to know from the team. Who did the woo? Because I love that. And keep in mind, right, the first transition sounded like this. Bit of harp doing it, and now this time we have. Sound like something from a video game doing that. So there's all this attention to detail, these little moments. So no two transitions are exactly the same. And I know as myself, in my work as a producer, that's something that I look for as well. I don't want any transition to just be like, oh, okay, they're doing the same situation. That's for me personally, I think it brings out a lot of cool nuance and expertise and allows our ear to kind of continue to be tickled and intrigued through the song. And now we finally get the full payoff of finishing the chorus. We get to go to our la 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 melody. There's three main things that this post chorus does really, really well. First off, the la 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 just just compositionally is really brilliant. It's hard to hate on that. Uh, two, we have new percussion going on. We have that new snare. I lied, there's definitely more than three things. <laughs> Psych. And so instead of the snap, now we have a snare going on. And it seems like this. is a different percussion variation we didn't have before, uh, but the sauce, of course, is in the La La production. So there's definitely three main layers to what's going on with that stack. We have one, the kids. Two, I'm almost certain there's adults in that same octave range as well. Hard to exactly tell, but then we have the low octave going along with it, which is really, really nice. Uh, it gives it warmth, it gives it groundedness, and it just doesn't sound like a bunch of little babies singing, which is kind of the point, but it keeps it from being too empty in that space. And then we have this really interesting. Which if I had to guess, it sounds like some kind of pluck that they 
added a ton of distortion to and then changed something about the shaping of it and merged it with either a synth. It's a lot of sound design that went into that. I don't think that's some basic preset. But again, the tail cut off, totally clean. And of course, then it finished. It finishes in this way where it's like there's more to the story. It doesn't give us a full resolution, even in our post course. Like they're withholding a lot of the song, <laughs> which is kind of funny, but they are withholding quite a lot of the song. And then it allows us to move on to the next section. Boys are always playing dolls, looking for the. Hear that whisper again? Boys are always playing dolls. Boys are always playing dolls. Looking for the ball. A lot more harmony than we ever got before. Now, again, we're getting the what we had in verse 1B in verse 1A as the beat comes in with the, the pluck. That little setup there. So now we're getting that information a little sooner. Very common verse 2 move. Take something we have from the end of verse one and put it into verse two, or like I prefer to do, you build your verse two, and then you take an element from that and put it into your verse one for only part of the time. Much easier. And then again, pretty standard, pretty standard pop move to just have like, beginning of the phrase, then put a harmony here. Like that's a pretty common volley back and forth. With nothing wrong with that, it just kind of it's a great way to add intrigue to lines and hit the punchlines a little harder. Simple percussion layer up the middle. But then we have at least two different shakers. There's one just doing the rhythm. And then there's... So there's that, which lines up really well. And that's really it as far as new. We have a couple of extra bells happening. Again, the same thing with the bend down. And then it hits another bell there. Now we're getting into this third chorus, which is really the moment where the production should be shining and should be adding something new because it's to me that moment where it's like, eh, if it's the exact same thing, I'm kind of a little tired of it, but this doesn't disappoint. It's one of my favorite moments of the song. Just feeling again, how we're getting this great, simple transformation in the track. So we have the same main digital uh, bell going on, but now we have everything on pizzicato strings instead of the acoustic guitar from the intro. The and of course, too. You don't get to pick and choose <laughs> my cat jumped up. So we kind of have it meandering in the back. It's less staccato, it's more open. And it sounds like the bell is even following that new pattern too, which is really cool. And so it's not the same following it was, but it seems like it's the same sound. And then it sounds like an upright bass for three notes and then that's it. Actually, I think that's an upright bass through this whole part. Because it's so much softer, rounder, a lot more mid-range, it's not crushing my sub dreams. But what's kind of cool then is it sets us up for a beautiful, impactful delta when we actually go into the synth 808s, big B, all that good stuff. So that's brilliant. Nobody's using upright bass like that. Yeah. 
what the hell is that? I love it. Can somebody, who is this? And can I have them make a sample pack, please? What? So can we kind of have that same? All everything for that post course so far has been the same until this change. Really interesting change to go four on the floor beat here. And of course, this is the only time we get the rest of that la 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 melody, which is really interesting. Not often. And then everything follows. There's like some weird harmony information going on with the plucks. And then lastly, they do a great job of just summarizing the sounds and kind of like letting them decay out as the la la la's finish. And then letting this pluck take the lead or the spell. And not even that. Of course, they dry it out. But after that last hit, they low pass it to then give it like a really finalized dark round finish. Bright, dark, 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 dark. Which just helps again make the song feel like, oh, it's over. And also, yes, you're right. Like my cat totally knocked over the red light. So you you, you can even see there. It's what you gonna do? What you gonna, um, and that brings us to a beautiful close for the song. So I really appreciate you taking your time to be here today. Again, if you enjoyed it, feeding the algorithm means so much because that's how we get this out to more people. And if you enjoyed it, I know other people will as well. Hope that we're already internet friends, but if not, you can find links to that in the description. I really appreciate your time because I know it is something finite. So thank you for spending it here with me. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Now get out there, work hard, and remember kindness wins. My cat is wild. <laughs>